friends. I'm Miss Melanie from Franklin County Library System's Grove Family Library, and welcome to Fun with Pets. Choosing a pet is an important life decision, one that will not only affect the quality of your life, but the health and well being of the animal you're choosing to bring into your home. There are so many factors to consider when deciding which pet is right for you. And as you'll hear again and again, it's important to do your research. And this program is a good place to start. Today, we'll be talking about fish. So let's learn about fish in general before we talk about keeping them as pets. Watch. <laughs> All about fish. There are over 32,000 different species of fish. Fish live their entire lives in water. They live in rivers, ponds, streams, and sometimes even in a tank. Some are found in fresh water only, like a lake, while others are only found in salt water, like an ocean. Fish are cold-blooded, which means their body temperature is the same as the environment where they live. If they live in the freezing waters of the Arctic, their bodies adapt to that cold temperature. And if they live in a tropical location where the water is much warmer, their bodies adapt to live there too. Humans are warm-blooded. This means regardless of whether it's very cold or very hot around you, your body temperature always stays the same, unless you have a fever. Fish come in a wide variety of colors, sizes, and characteristics. But all fish have certain things in common. For one thing, they are vertebrates, which means they have backbones just like humans. Fish also have fins that help them move and swim through the water. Their back fin helps push them forward, while the fins on each side help them steer. Some fish have fins on the top and bottom of their bodies. Those fins help them stay in place and keep them from rolling over. Another characteristic of a fish is gills. You use your lungs to breathe air, but fish use their gills. The gills allow fish to breathe in water. Fish get their oxygen from the water instead of the air. When water enters a fish's mouth, it passes through its gills. Little fibers in the gills absorb oxygen from the water and move it into the fish's bloodstream. The heart then pumps the blood to move the oxygen throughout the fish's body. A fish's diet varies. Some fish, like catfish, eat plant life in the water or algae scraped off rocks, while fish like sharks eat other fish as well as some mammals, like seals and sea lions. The larger a fish's mouth, the bigger the prey a fish can eat. The lanternfish and the viperfish both eat near the bottom of a body of water. The viperfish has fangs that are so large, they can't even fit in its mouth. It also has a large dorsal spine that lights up to attract fish, similar to a fishing lure. The herring and the mackerel both feed near the surface of the water. Their small mouths are good for eating smaller fish. For protection, many fish travel in a group called a school. In a school, the fish swim close to each other. This makes them harder to catch because a predator sees one large fish instead of many little fish. Most fish also have scales covering the outside of their body. The scales protect the skin from attacks. They also help the fish swim faster through the water. Did you know that fish have ears? Both humans and fish use their ears for balance. However, a fish's ears are not on the outside like yours are. Their ears are inside their bodies and are used to detect vibrations in the water. The eyes of a fish are similar to yours. They can see color like you can. Their eyes are also used to communicate. The male fish uses his eyes to attract female fish. Fish have a sharp sense of smell, 
and can detect odors in the water. There are three different classes or types of fish. Jawless, cartilaginous, and bony. Jawless fish do not have jaws, a stomach, or scales. Their skeletons are made up of cartilage instead of bones. Most don't have fins on the sides of their bodies. Instead, they have a dorsal or caudal fin. Dorsal fins are on the middle of a fish's back, while the caudal fin is the back of the fish. Jawless fish usually have long bodies. One type of jawless fish is called an eel. There are about 800 species of eels. They are long in length from 2 inches to 13 feet. Most eels live in the ocean and can swim backwards. Cartilaginous fish have jaws as well as paired fins. They also have skeletons that are made of cartilage instead of bone. Just like jawless fish, cartilaginous fish are covered with a tough outer skin that includes placoid scales. They have five to seven gill slits as well as two nostrils. Sharks fall into this category. Even though the skin of a shark appears to be smooth, they are actually covered with scales that can be seen under a microscope. Bony fish have skeletons that are made of bone instead of cartilage. These fish have scales as well as a single pair of gill openings. This category is the largest class of fish with over 20,000 species. Black marlin and some sturgeons belong to this group. The ocean sunfish is the heaviest bony fish in the world and can weigh about 2,200 pounds. There are some animals that many people believe are fish because these animals spend their lives in water too. But scientifically, they are not fish. Whales, dolphins, octopus, starfish, and jellyfish do not meet all the requirements needed to be called a fish. For example, dolphins and whales are warm-blooded. They don't have gills either. Instead, they have lungs just like you. They are part of the mammal category. Starfish do not have fins or gills, and jellyfish and octopus do not have backbones or vertebrates, so they are not fish either. The biggest fish are sharks. Most sharks grow to about 40 feet and weigh an average of 20 tons, or 40,000 pounds. One type of shark, the whale shark, was the largest ever measured at 60 feet long. It weighed 32 tons, or 64,000 pounds. That might seem pretty terrifying, especially if you saw it swimming near you in the water. But sharks rarely attack humans. They would rather feed on their diet of other fish. A small fish is called a fry. It's not yet an adult, but it can feed itself. The smallest species of fish in the world has a long name. Pedocypris progenetica. It is found in the waters near Indonesia and measures only about one-third of an inch. It is a member of the carp family. It has a see-through body and a head unprotected by a skeleton. A common fish is a trout. A rainbow trout has beautifully colored skin, which gives them their name. They are able to swim very quickly upstream. Trout are an important food source for humans, bears, and other animals. They usually live in fresh water lakes and rivers. Salmon might be another fish you're familiar with. They are born in fresh water. They travel all the way from streams and rivers to the ocean, a trip that can be hundreds of miles long. They might then travel another thousand miles in the ocean to get to their feeding ground. When it is time for them to make babies or reproduce, they then return to fresh water and often to the exact spot where they were born. There are 10 different ocean species of marlin. These fish have long bodies and spear-like snouts. Marlin can swim up to 50 miles an hour. 
and some can reach lengths of up to 16 feet and weigh 1,800 pounds. That's 1,800 pounds. Glassfish are completely transparent, which means you can see all the way through them. They are great as pets, but they don't like to live alone. They do best when they are with their same species. Many people in the world depend on fish for food. Fish help our environment too. They are one of the biggest contributors of nutrients to the various ecosystems near them. Fish were the first animals on Earth with backbones, and they have existed for over 500 million years. Fish have existed for a very long time. And I have to confess, before I did my research for this program, I thought fish would be some of the easiest animals to care for. After all, you buy a bowl, you fill it with water, you buy some fish, you put the fish in the water, remember to feed them, and you're good to go, right? <laughs> I have since learned that fish are some of the most complex animals to care for in captivity. To help us understand all of the elements we need to think about before we choose to have fish as pets is Dr. Deanna Becker from North Paws Animal Hospital. Can you help us understand a fish's environmental needs? So for fish, it's all about the water that they're in. Um, they're, the water is important, the water quality, uh, the cleanliness of the water, the pH of the water, um, the types of minerals that are in the water are important, um, and the types of bacteria that are in the water. And then safety also, it's important for them to have a safe environment so that they are not stressed out in their environment. It's important that they have friends that they can get along with in the tank. Um, and that they have places that they can, they can hide and get away from other fish. So that's, those are the things to think about whenever you pick out your fish. Uh, the pet store, the pet store staff is usually very knowledgeable about which fish get along and which, which fish don't get along. And they can also help you with setting up a tank that is safe for your fish. It sounds like you need to be a little bit of a chemist with water levels and pH and, and, and you know, dechlorination and all of those things. Can, can you talk a little bit more about that so children can understand? So the pH of the water is kind of a complicated issue. It really has to do with how many hydrogen ions are in the water. So you know that if you get into a pool that has um, too much chlorine in it, for instance, um, it could even burn your skin if there's too, too many chemicals in there. Well, the same things with the fish, except that they really can't get out of the water if, if it has too many chemicals in it or the pH, the amount of hydrogen ions in there are unhealthy for their skin and for their breathing. So there are kits that you can buy that test your, test your water and they'll tell you what the pH is and how much carbon is in the water, how much nitrogen, it's another important mineral, is in the water. And all of those things need to be in balance in order for the fish to be comfortable and be able to breathe properly for their skin to stay healthy, for them to not get diseases. Um, so, so yeah, it is a little bit of a chemistry project. I think it's more complicated than what to do it well and to have your fish live a normal, healthy life. Um, takes a little bit of work up front. And it's a matter of getting into a routine that you feel like is okay and you can maintain it. It's basically testing the water in the tank about every two weeks um, and cleaning the tank about every two weeks, including vacuuming, vacuuming the, the rocks in the bottom of the tank um, and then there's other things to do, like change the filter of the, of the tank every, about every month. Um, it's also important to take about 10 to 15% of the water volume out of the tank and change it with new water about every two weeks. So there's some work to um, keeping an aquarium 
properly, and that's a freshwater aquarium. Uh, but once you get into that routine, it's just part of taking care of your pets. Yeah, and I know parents should always be involved in the care of a pet, but it sounds like parents will need to be doing most of the work when it comes to properly caring for fish. I would agree with that, but they are so much fun. I do think that they are a good starter pet as long as a parent knows what they're getting into. Um, I think often fish aren't cared for properly. So you'll buy five to 10 fish, think you have a nice aquarium and then half of them pass away within the first couple of weeks. And that's because those, those things are not being balanced properly in the, in the aquarium. And then you replace the fish and the same thing happens. So the reason that's happening is because their environment's not being cared for properly. Um, but the kids can really enjoy that tank. It's good for, for kids to get up in the morning and feed the fish and um, count them. It's important to count the fish every day and make sure that you have the same number in there. Um, fish love to reproduce. My daughter, has an aquarium in her room and her algae eaters have reproduced. So we have about 10 algae eaters in her tank right now. <laughs> so that's always a, a risk too, is that they'll reproduce and you'll have more fish than you really were counting on. Now, is there such a thing as a fish veterinarian? Yes, there are fish veterinarian. They are very hard to come by. Um, I actually have been in touch with one. He is in Florida and a lot of them are coastal. Um, they are very few. They are marine veterinarians and they go to school for an extra four years to become, after veterinary school, to become marine veterinarians. Um, but yeah, they're usually in Florida, North Carolina, California, all along the coast where the big aquariums are. They have them in Baltimore. Um, at the National Aquarium. They're usually associated with places like that. So it doesn't sound like you can just take your fish to a vet. I'm sure fish get sick. So how do we know when our fish are sick and, and what can we do to help them? That's tough. It is. It's usually when a fish is sick, it goes back to how the tank is being cared for. Um, veterinarians don't usually say this, but probably your best source of information is going to be that pet store staff member where you got originally bought the fish because they understand how to properly care for the tanks that they have in their store. So that's a good place to start. Um, there are diseases to watch for. Some of the common diseases would be um, a bacteria called ick. It's ichthyosis where the fish get little white growths on them. Um, there's medication for that. And that's something the pet store employee could, could tell you about and, and you could purchase that medication. But usually it doesn't grow unless the water is improperly being taken care of. It's important not to buy too many fish and it's important not to overfeed them because those are two things that really can cause a lot of disease in the tank and make it hard for the, the water to be regulated properly. Um, Fish can also have diseases of their, they have something called a swim bladder. And it is basically like a little balloon in their body that keeps them floating. And whenever it has different kinds of diseases, it can, they have a hard time sw swimming properly and staying upright. So those are, those are probably the most common diseases. They, we, we see growths, little tumors that can form, especially on goldfish. Um, but there's really only so much that you can do about that unfortunately, in this area. So any thoughts, more thoughts on the, the pros and the cons of, of having fish? You sound like a, a fish enthusiast for ch kids. <laughs> I am. I've had, I've had fish my whole life. My mom always had, still does, have goldfish. She loves goldfish. They actually can have little personalities. Um, goldfish are about the dirtiest fish to keep in your house. It's very hard to keep their tanks clean, but she did a really good job. So I, I really grew up with fish. I think they're a great starter pet. Just know as a parent that you're very highly involved with taking care of that tank. And, and it's a good, they're good lessons for your kids too on how to take care of a pet. 
Yeah, and there's a large initial expense, I would imagine. I know one of the things I talked about with the uh, pet store people was um, how passionately they felt about not just keeping like a beta fish or a goldfish in just a little bowl, like you typically see in children's books, that really they are happier and healthier in an aquarium setting, not just a little bowl. Absolutely. And doesn't that make perfect sense when you think about it, that they, they, need, they need room to explore. They need multiple things in their aquarium so that they can hide and explore and feel comfortable and find their own space. It makes perfect sense. But yeah, those children's books, when you really think about it, they, they always show a fish in a bowl. And that's not life. No. Yeah. So any final thoughts? Any final thoughts? Um, I think that the people at the pet store are, have been great uh, every time I talk to them, honestly, about um, recommending which fish are good starter fish. There are certain species of fish that I think are better for or easier to care for. And I would, neon tetras, I think are a really great place to start. They are these little blue and red fish and you can buy quite a few of them without overcrowding the tank. They love to swim in schools. Uh, guppies are great as well. well. Guppies, they even have pretty fantail guppies, so you can pick them out in different colors. Um, I, I would I would highly recommend that after having children and starting tanks for children. Those are the ones that I tend to go for. I think they're easier to care for. Stay away from the goldfish. I mean, they're beautiful, but they make for a messy tank. So if you're looking for easy care, the little fish get along really well. As Dr. Diana said, if you're thinking of keeping fish as pets, pet store workers are a great source of information. To learn more, we turn to Dustin Kiefer, the aquatic specialist at the Petco in Chambersburg. Dustin and I met before vaccines were readily available and we weren't able to socially distance, so we're wearing masks for our interview. And as expected, Dustin was full of helpful information. What should we think about first when, if we're thinking about choosing fish as a pet? So it's the type of fish that you want in the size of aquarium that are associated with those ones. Um, you know, there's, there's small schooling fish, there's large solitary fish. So let's take the, the common goldfish for an example. Um, the common goldfish, you know, they're about anywhere from 10 to 14 inches on average full size. So you generally want like a 55 to 75 gallon minimum for those fish because um, they're such a long lived and larger species of fish. Yeah, well, when I think about goldfish, I remember the going to the store and having a little plastic bag with this little tiny goldfish in there. Yeah, so uh, you really need to think about what size your fish is going to grow to. Indeed. It, it, at the end. Yeah. yeah, and you want to make sure you have that space for them uh, to grow to their full size. It's like having a great day in an apartment. It's just not gonna work that well if you don't have the right size aquarium for them. Yeah, yeah. And aquariums are not cheap. <laughs> um, it's always the initial setup that's always the most expensive. Um, for a given example, like a 10 gallon tank, you're probably going to spend anywhere from as everything included, fish, decor, food, supplies, everything like that, around anywhere from like 100 to maybe $150 at the most expensive part of them. Um, that scales up like a 40 gallon. I have a 40 gallon at home. Um, that probably cost me about 300 to $400 to set up full. So it does. Okay, so if you're thinking about a fish that needs more than just a little fish bowl, yeah, you better start saving your uh, pennies and dimes and quarters now because, you know, an aquarium is going to be expensive. So that's something that you need to think about when you're considering having fish as pets and not just the aquarium, but all the things that go into the aquarium, right? We have a lot of decisions to make, don't we? Yes, we do. It's uh, depending on what type of decor you want in your tank, but if you have cold water or, or warm water, fresh water fish, um, there's a little kind of bit of considerations to think of. Um, whether you want fake plants, live plants, if you do wood, rock, there's a lot of different options that you can do in order to make your aquarium feel like home for your fishy friends. Just make okay. sure you don't overcrowd. That's the biggest thing, don't overcrowd. 
from salt water, fresh water? What, what do you think for young friends who are just starting out with uh, fish? Well, the best option, I, I'm, when I was a kid, when I first started an aquarium, I, I picked up a 10 gallon freshwater tank. Um, I had cherry barbs and gold barbs in my first aquarium. Um, they're not for everybody, you know, whatever tickles your fancy. There's all kinds of different species of fish out there. Um, but if, they, if there's like bettas that are really great in small aquariums, you know, like two and a half, five gallons are really perfect for them. Like I said, if you like goldfish, Again, it's probably start for a little bit bigger of aquarium. Um, there's fish like schooling tetras. There's a ton of different types of schooling tetras out there. Um, a 10 gallon is okay for most of them to start out in, but depending on the species, you may need to start a larger aquarium for them. What kind of maintenance, like what do we have to do to keep our fish healthy and, and thriving? I'll start at the beginning. So the biggest thing is make sure your aquarium has been set up for a couple of days before getting your fish. It's the bacteria cycle, the nitrogen cycle, super simple. Um, but you're generally doing monthly water changes. That's the, the usual basics that's recommended for fish. You know, 50% water in, 50% water out. Make sure you dechlorinate it. That's a super duper important thing. Then you, um, what about chlorination? Dechlorination, yeah. So it's really important to make sure you buy tap water condition to remove your chlorine because fish do not like chlorine whatsoever at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. um, but yeah, if, at least doing a 50% water change every week, you know, make sure you feed your fish daily. Most fish once a day di uh, per day is fantastic, but things like goldfish and some other species are usually about two times a day for feeding. Um, most freshwater fish will definitely eat um, your, uh, your freeze-dried prepared foods. Me, I'm a little bit more particular. I like to do frozen foods if you have um, a little bit more picky fish. Well, it'd be things like uh, like rainbow fish or rasboras. They generally like to eat like like freeze dried blood worms or frozen blood worms. But most of the time, your you know high quality pellet or flake food is really really a great start to get your fish healthy. Because um, it's kind of like a, a multivitamin. You feed them every day that they pretty much getting all what they need. Um, the other foods can be as replacements for more picky fish. Um, but generally, your your pellets and flakes are going to be the best option to start with. No, oh, it's not very expensive to maintain the aquarium once you have all your basics. It's always always your initial setup that's always going to be your biggest cost. I mean, like this past month expenditure for my fish is maybe like twenty, thirty dollars. That's because I have two aquariums, so I have, you know, twice. I wouldn't say twice as much, but a little bit more expenditure on them to make sure that the, it's mostly filter replacement pieces that I need for your your monthly maintenance. That's mm -hmm. that's the biggest pieces that I buy usually now. There's always friends that you can add to your aquarium as well that can really help you out. Snails are a great option. There's different types of algae eaters. Um, there's also bottom feeders as well. A lot of people get those two confused. You know, you got your, everyone calls them sucker fish, but you're thinking about your common placostomus. Um, and there's also, uh, and the ones that not very well, it's a uh, little, little catfish. He's awesome. I call them auto cats for short. Um, but there's little buddies out there that can help you keep your aquarium clean. Make sure you have a good space for your aquarium. A lot of fish are pretty shy, so you want to make sure, not exactly secluded, but a less traveled space from your home is usually pretty fantastic so they don't feel stressed when you're walking by them, you know. Some families have bigger families, like, you know, four or five individuals, um, so you don't want to put it in a high traffic area so you see, you know, your fish are always stressed out and hiding in the back of the aquarium. Yeah, and if you have other pets, like cats and dogs. Indeed. Yeah, <laughs> you don't want, you want something over the top of it, right? Definitely, Number one, that yes. the fish can't jump out, Indeed. but that the cat can't put his paw in and exactly. scoop, scoop out lunch, right? And it also helps keep water in the tank too, because of evaporation. There is so much to think about and to purchase if you're going to keep fish as pets. Remember, in order to enjoy your fish for years to come, you need to know how to take care of them properly. So, do your research, save your money, and make sure your parents are on board. Fish are tranquil, calming, quiet, and fun to watch. Some types of fish are playful and will even interact with you. And a fish aquarium of any size, if you maintain it properly, is a wonderful addition to your home. And don't forget Annette. <laughs> we hope you've enjoyed this edition of Fun with Pets and that we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.